In this video, we're going to look more carefully at the issue of naming molecules and learn to name some molecules that are somewhat more complex. The formal word for naming is nomenclature. So the name of an, of an organic molecule generally consists of three parts. The central or parent part of the name is the part that indicates how many carbons are in the main chain of the molecule. This is the meth, eth, prop, but part of the name that you've seen in the alkanes, alkenes and so on. The suffix of the name tells you about the family of molecules that it belongs to. The suffix "-ain", indicates the molecule is an alkane, which tells you it has all single bonds. The suffix "-ein", would tell you that it belongs to the alkynes, and that there must be a triple bond somewhere in the molecule. The prefix of the name is where you indicate more complex parts of the molecule. We've already encountered cyclohexane, for instance. Cyclo is the prefix for this molecule. It tells you that it's in the shape of a ring. Hex tells you that there are six carbons in the molecule, and ane tells you that the bonds are all single. So I've just quickly stuck this slide in here to revise the names of the alkanes, uh, in particular those word roots that tell you how many carbons are there. You should know these off by heart by now. So in order to help with nomenclature, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists, IUPAC, has come up with a list of rules, and I've summarised the basic ones here, and we're going to work through them. Let's start with the first two. When you have a molecule that you need to name, first identify and name the longest continuous carbon chain that's in that molecule, and then identify and name any groups that are attached to that chain. Let's start by looking at the isomers that have the formula C4H10. I've put them here both in a full structural formula and a stick structure. The first molecule, the linear one, is easy. It's a straight chain with four carbons and it's an alkane, so it's called butane. What about the second isomer? Well, the first naming rule was to find and name the longest continuous carbon chain. In this molecule, the longest chain is three carbons long. And what's the name for a single bonded chain that's three carbons long? Propane. OK, but what about this little branch? The naming of branches, also called substituents, follows the same pattern as the alkanes. Except this time we put YL ul, on the end of the word to indicate that it's a branch and not a whole molecule. But the parent part of the name follows exactly the same pattern according to the number of carbons involved. So a branch that's one carbon long is methyl, and a branch that's two carbons long is ethyl, and so on. I'll draw a couple of these out to make it clearer. Overall, or taken in a group, these substituents are called alkyl. We've replaced the ane of alkanes, or the ene of alkenes, with the "-ile suffix, or "-ul." to show that we're talking about branches. So, back to our second isomer. The naming rules say that we should find and name the longest chain in the molecule, so that's propane, and our list of branches says that a one carbon branch, like we have here, should be methyl. So, the name of this molecule is methylpropane. So naming helps us avoid the ambiguity in formulae. Just giving the molecular formula doesn't tell you the structure of the molecule, but using its name gives you all the information that you need to draw it out. Now let's try and name the isomers of C6H14. First we need to draw them. Try it yourself first. Pause the video and try to draw the isomers that have the formula C6H14. The best way to do it is systematically. Start with the longest possible chain and then add branches bit by bit. First, you have a six carbon chain, and this is hexane. Next, if you remove one carbon from the main chain and make it a branch, and you can put the branch here, that makes an isomer. Or you could put the branch here, these are two different molecules. Or you could put it here. Now, is this another isomer? If you look carefully and compare it with this one here, it's actually the same molecule just flipped around. So that's not an isomer. So we'll cross that one out. Now we could take two carbons off the main chain and use them both as branches. So that's another isomer. Or we could attach both methyl groups to the same carbon, making a sort of cross shape. That would be another. 
Uh, and then another option would be if we took two carbons off the main chain again, but instead of attaching them as two separate methyls, could we put them on as one ethyl branch? Let's try that. Okay, it looks different, but let's find out if it really is. What's the longest possible chain on this molecule? Can you see it? It's five carbons long and the methyl branch is on the third carbon of those five. Well, that means this molecule is actually the same as this isomer here. It's just that we've bent it around in a curve. Try drawing this out for yourself if it doesn't make sense immediately. Okay, so let's see if we can name these. The first is easy, that's hexane. But the next two are difficult. They both seem like they should be called methylpentane, but they're clearly different molecules, so we need a way of distinguishing between them. Can you think of a sensible way of dealing with this? Well, let's go back to the naming rules and see what the chemists came up with. You can see that number three on our list of rules is to number the chain consecutively starting at the end nearest a multiple bond or substituent group. So we're going to number the carbons in the main chain. And then, rule number four, you designate the location of each substituent according to the number of the carbon that it's attached to. So let's try this out. So let's look at the two methyl pentanes first. The rule said to number the main chain consecutively starting at the end nearest the substituent. So we'll number the carbons in the first one like this. Uh, and that means you can see that the methyl is attached to carbon number two. So the way we name this is 2-methylpentane. And that tells you that the methyl branch, the methyl substituent, is attached to carbon number two of the main chain, which is pentane. Okay, in the second one, the substituent is right in the middle, so it doesn't matter which end we start from when we number the main chain. Either way, it's going to be on carbon number three. So this isomer is called 3-methylpentane. What about these guys? Well, first of all, what's the longest chain in the molecule? You can count it up. There's four carbons, so the main chain is going to be called butane. And then it has two methyl substituents. Uh, and if we number the carbons, you can see that one methyl group is on carbon number two and one is on carbon number three. So in the name, we need to indicate that there are two separate methyl branches. So we've got 2-methyl and 3-methyl. We could just write 2-methyl, 3-methyl butane, but that would be not particularly efficient. So it turns out that the rules have a way for us to deal with this. What we do is we use the prefix di to indicate that there are two of the same kind of group. So this molecule is based on butane. It has 2-methyl groups, so we say dimethyl, and the carbons that they're attached to are carbons 2 and 3. So the final name of this molecule is 2,3-dimethylbutane. Note the comma between the numbers. We always separate numbers using a comma, and we separate numbers and letters using a hyphen. Okay, for our last molecule here, again, we number the main chain. It's butane. And this time we find that the two methyl groups are attached to the same carbon. So it's still dimethyl, but they're both attached to carbon number 2. So the name is 2,2-dimethylbutane.